we're going to see um, this morning this uh, simple suspension system. Uh, we're going to explore a couple of ways of, of how we uh, go about modeling this uh, uh, system created in the computer model. The first thing we're going to do is to explore the block diagram method. And so uh, let's take a look at the example that we have on the screen right now. I will disappear for now. Um, and here we have the, um, the mass of the system. Um, and then you have this, uh, this spring here, which is, has a stiffness K. We're going to put the, um, you know, just mass in here. And we have this damper that has a coefficient here. So this is damper. And then we have the spring in here. And then, of course, we have the ground. So what I would suggest uh, that we do is we create um, an outline. I like outlines in here. And we say, what would be the steps to take? The first thing is, um, um, I would say, identify the components. You will see under function. Okay, very good. See, this is much better than my handwriting. So that's exactly what we have done right now. Then we are going to uh, make a free body diagram of the system. So let's make a free body diagram. And then um, you would say, um, um, apply all the forces, or you would say, draw, draw all forces applied to the mass. OK, so let's do that. Um, in here, we, we're going to have a, um, let's just do it in here, this, so we have enough space to write if, some more if we need to. So this is the mass. Let's apply all forces to it. The first thing we got is something is going to happen here is that we're going to have to define the direction that we go. The direction that we go is, is going to be uh, positive if we go up for um, x dot and x, or I think we called it y. Maybe we use the letter y. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Let's just, let's just do that. All right. Let's just erase this part in here. And we are going to do the, OK, change variables. Uh, it's going to be positive this way for y dot as well as for y, the displacement. So if I, if I uh, move uh, a little bit um, up, then obviously, this is going to oppose the motion. The spring is going to have a force k times x. And because it's down, it's going to be in the negative direction. This one is p times y dot. And we said y dot, not x by y. OK. And then um, we, of course, have the weight on this which is m times g. So we draw the forces that are applied on the mass. And in here, after we do that, we say, OK, um, 
write the differential equation applying Newton's laws so what does that mean? it means that the Newton's laws tells us that the summation of the forces acting on this is equal to mm, the rate of change of momentum or known also summation of forces equal to mass times the acceleration like this so what we're gonna do we'll say okay fine we do the summation of forces we say mg which is down then minus k times y minus b times y dot like that this is equal to m times x double dot m times y dot like that so you see this is the, the summation point and then this is the the mass times acceleration term um, so let's see here I'm missing and then you could say um, you would say transform transform the differential equations into graphical representation okay so once we do this we'll, we'll go over here and we say okay we need to do the um, to transform this in, in some graphical representation of this and um, for that purpose I'd say okay that is um, finding here we we're gonna draw it in this area here so what we'll do is we say okay look this is a summation point and in this summation point we are going to get the first term of this the 1 minus mg this is the first it's obviously is a minus in here and then you have the other one that is like this minus k times y and this one that is minus b times y dot like this and this whole thing equals to mass times the acceleration like this so we have done the summation you know on the circle is we've used that symbol for the summation yeah so okay if this is the case um, the way we complete this graph is um, well okay the, the, we transform the different equation into a graphical representation I mean you say starting with the summation okay six um, you could say perform perform the integration with not perform represent why is that would be better represent the integration with um, uh, symbols you know whatever 
of course, this is graphically is what I mean, you know. Okay. And then um, represent uh, the outputs. the ones we want, all right? So in here we go, and we say, okay, fine, we will uh, we'll do the, um, first of all, we will multiply this by one over m, and you will get just y double dot. If you integrate once, one over s, then you'll get y dot like this. And if you integrate this, 1 over s, and then you'll integrate y like this. And in here you could put a scope like that. And now what we're going to do is we say, OK, look, this is b times y, y dot is over here. If we multiply it by b, we create this form. And of course, the signs are here, minus, minus, and minus in here. And this, this is linked to, to y. So we need, we need, We need to get the y dot here, multiply by something, gives you this. So there you go. So you say y, and then you have an integrator here, which is k. Now the integrator, but just the constant, and then it completes the graph. So what have we done? We have basically transformed the mathematical representation of the equation into a graphical form. And based on this, we can do go to Simulink. That, that's how we do it. So the steps left are to go to Simulink and do the simulation there. But we'll stop for now. <coughs>